Jennifer with Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with a new project for Doodlebug. So I loved this little camera doodle pop. I thought it was just adorable. So I made it into an album. <laughs> I have used the Doodlebug SVG file from Lori Whitlock's shop to make the camera into a very easy little ring bound album with a shaker cover. Um, on the front here, I've got the Butterfly Doodle Pops. I've got some of the um, Hello Again shape sprinkles inside the uh, shaker, and then Doodle Bug sequins, and then I've got some of the Hello Beautiful flowers over here. And this was very, very simple. Um, I did actually put pictures in this one, which I am terrible about doing. Um, so I use this for uh pictures of my friends uh we call ourselves the squirrels and we are scattered all over the country this was our zoom christmas party <laughs> and we get on zoom together most weekends not always um everybody can't always make it but we see each other a couple of times a year typically at retreats and things and we just have a really good time so i wanted to a really simple way to kind of showcase those pictures so the pages in here are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I did round the corners. Um, I've got two pages that are the uh, gold dot acetate in here. And then for decoration, I kept it super simple. It is literally uh, chit chat, mini icons, and some of the puffy icons. And that's about the extent of it. Um, like I said, super, super simple. Um, I did leave one little spot in here for journaling because I'm terrible about doing that, but I did leave a space so that maybe someday when I decide I don't hate my handwriting, I'll actually do that. <laughs> but um, like I said, just super simple, goes together in no time at all. Um, and there you go. So, Full tutorial will play next. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, so I've got my camera SVG file. The first thing I'm going to do, because I know what size I want my pages in this to be, I want these to be six and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay. So what I can do, because this actually will come onto your mat a little bit smaller, is I've kind of adjusted the size on that until a 4 by 6 page is going to sit on this about where I want it to sit. Okay? So I've got my page. This I'm actually going to just cut just with my trimmer. I'm not going to cut these with the Cricut. Um, but we're using that just so we have sizing to make sure our base is going to be sized correctly. So I can get rid of that now. All right, so then what I want to look at is we've got all these different layers over here in this SVG file. And the very bottom one here, we're going to duplicate. Okay, so this is pretty much the base for the camera itself. Okay, so I'm going to want four of these. Okay, and I'm going to change their color to white for now, just so that when it cuts, it's going to cut and put these on their own mat. Okay, that's the main reason when I'm manipulating the SVG files that I will do something like that is because I want them on their own mat. Okay, so now I've got my base here. I want to copy it one more time. And I'm going to come down here under com under the combine menu and I'm going to hit weld. Okay. Because what's that that's going to do is it's going to put all of those pieces together. And that's our chipboard piece that we're going to cut. Okay. So I want two of those. I'm going to leave those brown because those are our chipboard pieces. The rest of these, there's really not a ton of pieces to this one. So really I can kind of leave it as is. 
Um, the only one I'm going to do a little bit differently is going to be this brown ring right here. I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, so that is four inches. And I'm going to come in, come over here under contour. Okay. And I do not want the center to cut out of this extra piece. Okay. And then I'm going to change the color on this one because that is where we're going to make our shaker. So I'm going to make that gray so that our acetate, I know that that's my acetate piece. Okay. Everything else fairly straightforward. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. No, I don't want a new collection. I just need to save it forgetting not to just hit enter because then it thinks you want to create a new collection which I do not want to do. All right so I am going to go ahead and cut all of these pieces and then we'll go ahead and put this together together. Okay so I have everything cut. I did cut our little frame that's going on the top of our shaker and I did find some gold cardstock. Um, I did cut that three times out of craft foam so that's what we're going to use to make our shaker. We're going to deal with that, those pieces in a minute. So I'm going to put that over there and my acetate wherever it went, which I cut the normal acetate before I remembered I had the gold polka dot acetate um, that I could have used and I decided to go with the clear. So we're going to set all of the acet, or I'm sorry, not the acetate, the shaker pieces over there. So here is the doodle pop, okay? So what I did for that center stripe on the camera, instead of making it white, I did cut it out of that same pattern, okay? So this is going to be the base paper on the camera, and I just need to line this up because I'm pretty sure when I took my little chipboard pieces off, I think I flipped them the wrong direction. I'm not positive. No, maybe I'm not. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I'm okay. Yes, okay. So, we have our four pieces that we're going to use to mat the chipboard. And that's where I need to make sure I've got them all lined up the right direction. Because there is a difference, just ever so slightly, on this camera. So that one's going to go on the back. And this one's going to go on the front. And then the same thing back here. I have a front and I have a back. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these down. I'm sure my glue's clogged, so let's deal with that really quickly. Oh, maybe it's not. That would be a pleasant surprise for once. Okay. down on here and I do have just a tiny bit of the chipboard sticking out I am not sure why that always seems to happen on the chipboard pieces um, but it's not enough where it's annoying so we're just gonna leave it as is um, if we wanted to we could go around our outside edge with some twine which I might end up doing anyway just because I love how that ends up looking right now we're just going to prep our front and back cover pieces like so okay so this is going to be our front so 
so this one's going to sit on top of it and it does end up completely covering that up so I really didn't need to put that one on there but just in case I went ahead and did that anyway even though it really probably was not 100% necessary but that's okay all right so then this one will go on here and then this one will go on here and then we've got some other little pieces and parts here that are going to go as well so all right we're not doing that just yet so i'm going to put that to the side let's go ahead and get our pieces on here as well make sure that i am lined up correctly i am This one I'm going to set aside and we're going to go ahead and get our pieces for our camera here and I do need to pull up my actual thing in design space just for my reference as far as how this all layers together. All right, so this piece is going to go right on top of the gold. So really, if I had manipulated my file a little bit more, I could have just cut gold accents but it's okay. All right, this little bitty hot pink piece, hot pink. Um, I just totally blanked on the name of that color. Oh my gosh, seriously. It's gonna go right there. This black piece is gonna go right here. Um, you could pop that up if you want to. I'm gonna leave it flat. because I think it's going to get a little bit just so that's not getting caught. And then we have these two that are going to kind of go over to the side here. And then this little gold one goes over the top. Okay, and then this piece is going to go about right there, okay? Actually, I think that needed to go down a little bit further, but I may be too late. Yeah, it's okay. 
This needed to slide down just a teensy bit more, but you know what? It will be just fine where it is because, oh, actually, no, it's fine because this goes right over this middle section. Okay, so I'm going to layer these pieces together. Because these go on the middle section of this. And then this little white one goes over here. Kind of like so. And we have this little tiny gold dot. It's going to go over there like so. All right. So this will eventually go in the middle there. For now, I'm going to just set it aside. Because first thing we want to do is we want to get our foam lined up and glued together. Okay. So I am literally just going to take one piece. I'm going to go out around with the glue. I'm going to line them up together and just go around like so to make sure it's all lined up and then press it down. And this is where you got to be kind of careful because craft foam will want to slide. And you want to make sure as you're doing this that you're not pulling on it because it will pull out of shape and then your whole thing's going to be just slightly wonky and you don't want that. So make sure you're pressing rather than pulling. And if you wanted to do a couple more layers and make this like super deep, you could. does take it just a minute or two to dry and really your best bet with drying this is putting something heavy on top of it I'm trying to find what I've got that's heavy that's going to sit on there aha Ooh, tape so I'm going to set that on top of it and set that aside to let it dry while I figure out what I'm going to put on the inside of the shaker so that we're ready to go Okay, so while we wait for the foam to dry, because it's, of course, taking its sweet time, um, I've gone ahead on our ring that's going on top of the acetate and done score tape on the back of this. However, I'm going to lay this where it needs to go eventually, and I need to put this piece down. So what I'm going to do is take a paper clip. I'm going to line this up at the base here. I'm just going to kind of clip it. I'm doing it with paper clips so it'll still sit flat once I do get it kind of positioned here. Um, because basically I need to glue this piece down and I want it down before I start trying to assemble a shaker on the top of it. Okay. Easy peasy. Okay. So. That is pretty much ready to go. I'm going to lay my acetate on there because you can kind of see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and get the backing off of my tape. I'm just going to do like a little section here because I'm actually going to do it backwards. So my acetate should be 
the same size as my little ring here. So, got it started there. And then I'm just going to pull this out a couple of inches at a time. And push that down. And there we go. And then I will take my bone folder. Oh, this is so much more comfortable. And I'm just going to burnish that down to make sure it's good and stuck. So this is technically ready to go once our foam dries. Okay? So while we wait for that to happen, I'm going to go ahead and cut our pages. And I'll be right back. Okay, so gluing this onto the paper, this will actually dry just a little bit faster as opposed to the layers of um, foam. Um, so I was going to use this little like butterfly shaker fill that I have. Then I remembered I have sequins. <laughs> so I just need to decide, and I have the bigger jars that I don't know if they still make or not. Um, so I'm going to put some of those in there. So I've got swimming pool and I have cupcake. And then let's put some bumblebee. Which is a little bitty jar. Because the bumblebee does have some gold in there too. Okay, so I've kind of got those. And I'm going to kind of put those off to the side because what I want in the middle middle shape sprinkles. So let's go ahead and put, and it would probably make more sense to put these in before you put this down, but I didn't think about it quite honestly. So I'm going to do little notes. Let me grab my tweezers because I've got glue on my fingers that of course decided to come off right then and there onto my piece. Maybe. Maybe not. For crying out loud. There we go. There we go. All right. So we've got that. And then I think I'm going to put this little coffee cup and then the little glasses. Okay. So now I can take my frame and we're going to do this just like we did putting the acetate on that I am going to line this up on here first and then I can just pull my backing off all the way around so that it goes down perfectly. Okay, so there's our shaker, and then I'll put something on the outside on the top up in this corner, and that will finish off our cover. Or, I'm sorry, our shaker for our cover. So then this whole thing will go down on top of 
that chipboard piece. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up. front and back covers. Let's go ahead and work on our inside. Okay, so for the pages, what I have done is I have just taken and I've got two pieces of the gold dot acetate that I've cut to four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I've got just some random patterns that I've done the same with and then a couple of pieces of the solid that I've done the same thing. So these are all four and a quarter by six and a quarter super easy. And the first thing we're going to do is round our corners. So I'm going to use the 10 millimeter corner on my corner rounder and I'm going to round the corners on all of my pages. I'm doing this because I literally just vacuumed my craft room this afternoon. <laughs> so let's get little tiny pieces of paper everywhere. This one will do that acetate because it is really heavy acetate. I may have to get out the big one. Hopefully not. We'll see. Moment of truth, let's see. Ooh, it'll work. It doesn't really want to, but it will. That's seriously how heavy this acetate is. This acetate is amazing. In fact, I have something I'm going to do with it when I get the new Halloween acetate. Maybe Christmas. I haven't decided which one I'm actually going to use on the project I have in mind, but we'll see. Okay, so let's clean all that up. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I want one of those on the front, and then I'm just going to go through here and make sure my directional pieces are facing the right direction, essentially. So I'm going to decide how I want to do this. So I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go yellow, and then I'm going to go with this one, and then a green, and then that, and a yellow, that one, and a green. Actually, no, I think I want that one on the very back. that one and then that one so that's the order I'm putting my pages you of course can put them in in whatever order you want to so here is the back of my album so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna use the solid one just to make it clearer I'm gonna kind of center this up and decide where I want my hold 
Okay. I need to keep in mind, however, that wherever I do this, I want to be mindful of what on the front is going to end up getting poked through. Okay. So, maybe I'll do it this way. So if I do it about here, okay, so I'm going to line this up. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to pop my hole. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can line these two up together. I can take a pencil, assuming I can find a pencil, and mark where I want my hole there so that I can again line it up in here. So that's ready to go. And then I can just take this and use it as my template. I think that acetate's heavy enough. I don't want to try and do that at the same time. And really, I'm kind of close to that edge, which I'm not wild about. But I think it'll be okay. Okay. Now I can just take several of those in one shot, line it up, and punch my holes. My page is back in order here. my pages that are going to go in here. So now it's just a matter of matting, decorating, adding pictures, etc, etc, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so I've got it on a ring. Um, I did, I have a punch that will do those little reinforcement circles, and you can see it better on one of the solid pages. So I just took um, some of the leftover 6x6 paper from my last project and punch those holes and did add those on there just for some additional strength. And what I'll do next is as I go through and put pictures in it, then I'll decorate and whatnot as I do that. Um, and then of course finish off some other decorating on the front cover and that's pretty much done. So I, you of course will have seen the walkthrough of all of that at the beginning. And as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified every time I post new videos. And um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram um, under Scrapping Under the Influence. And I have a group on Facebook called Scrap Happy Peeps that is just for any projects that you've made, anything you've made that you want to share. Um, feel free to join the group and share it over there. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.